Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. Today's topic is Newton's First Law of Motion, Part 1, Balanced Force. Objectives for today is to know Newton's First Law, to understand the meaning of state of motion, and the meaning of force balanced and unbalanced. Be able to determine if an object has acceleration. Newton's First Law states, an object will stay in its state of motion unless acted by an unbalanced force. The state of motion just means its velocity. Velocity has two parts. Its vector quantity has magnitude, which is the speed, and the direction. So to restate Newton's first law, uh, that means an object will not change its velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. The meaning of force. A force is a vector quantity. That means it has magnitude and direction. The force is describing a push or a pull on an object. For instance, when you're pushing a chair, when you're pushing a car, when you lift someone, you're applying a force. Force can be measured by a spring scale. The unit for force is a newton. A newton is not a basic unit. Remember the three basic units we have learned? Kilograms, meters, and second. Newton is a derived unit. Derived means by combining the basic units. So one Newton is kilograms times meters divided by second squared. The gravitational force, or the weight. Gravitational force is how much the force the Earth exert on you. That force of a medium-sized apple is one Newton. So um, similarly, an egg and a golf ball are similar to an apple. They are all about a Newton. We are not very familiar with Newtons, but we are more familiar with pounds. So one kilogram has two pounds. One kilogram has about 10 Newtons. That means one pound is about five Newtons. You need to memorize these conversions. Say an average person is about 150 pounds. That means the average person is about 75 kilograms. That means the average person weighs about 750 newtons. So you need to be able to memorize this so you can do estimations. Balanced and unbalanced force. If two individual forces are of equal magnitude and opposite direction acting on the same object, then the forces are said to be balanced. Balanced means they cancels. Take a look at this picture. Here is a person standing on the floor. The forces on the person are canceled. The upward force equals to downward force, so the person is not moving. So one only balance the force acting on object, the object is said to be in equilibrium. Its acceleration equals to zero. We have talked about equilibrium. Equilibrium means acceleration equals to zero, velocity is constant. In this case, it's a special constant velocity equals to zero. The person is at rest. So when is equilibrium happening? When the forces are balanced. Now, when the forces are not balanced, that means the forces cannot be canceled. Take a look at this physics book. Up and down cancels the force exerted by the table, pushing it up, and the force from the earth pulling the physics book down. They are canceled but there is a leftward force, it's not canceled. That means this object is not in equilibrium. That means acceleration is not zero. That means the velocity will change. Unbalanced force result a net force. So when the forces are not balanced, the, the, the add together is not zero. And that added together is called a vector sum. We have a special name for that vector sum. We call that a net force or resultant. So be familiar with those two vocabularies. We're going to use those a lot. So because it's a vector sum, a vector has directions. So we need to pay attention to directions. Let's take a look at this. So here's a vector 5 to the right plus 5 to the right. Together, you will have 10 to the right. However, if you have 5 to the right plus 5 to the left, then you will have a 0. This will balance each other. Next one, you will have 15 to the right 
next one you will have 5 to the right plus negative 10 because the negative is to the left you will have a negative 5 that means it's 5 to the left 5 and negative 5 and so forth so that's how you'll have a vector sum that's different from algebraic sum because all algebraic sum this two should be the same 5 and 5 should be the same now let's determine the net force in the horizontal and the vertical direction so horizontal and vertical should be separate. So here's three scenarios, A, B, C. Take a look at the first, A. You'll have, remember we have up as positive, down as negative. So this would be, add them together, will be positive 1,200 plus negative 800. So in a vertical direction, you should have 400 positive. Positive means upward. Now in a horizontal direction, there is no horizontal force. So horizontal is zero. Vertical, you should have 400 newtons going up. Because again, 1,200 plus negative 800. B, horizontal still zero. But in vertical, you have 600 plus negative 800. So you should have a negative 200. That negative it means downward. So you have zero and 200 down. In scenario C, up and down cancels because they are the same magnitude but opposite in direction. But there is a, a left horizontal force. So horizontal is 200 to the left and a vertical you have a zero. Another example, analyze each situation individually and determine the magnitude of the unknown forces if the object is in equilibrium. Because it's in equilibrium means all the forces has to cancel if the object is in equilibrium, or sometimes you have a net force. Okay, let's take a look at a, a first one. First one says it's in equilibrium, all the force cancels. So B has to cancel 200. So B has to be 200 going up. A has to cancel 50 going to the right. So A has to be to the left 50. Take a look at the second one. This, the net force is 900 up. So basically what plus negative 200 equals to 900? So C has to be 1100 going up because 1100 minus 900 give you 200. Now this one net force is 60 left. Since left is in the horizontal direction, so vertical has to cancel out. Since you have 300 up, E has to be 300 down. Now, what has to be D so you can have net 60 to the left? So basically, you'll have D has to be 20 because 20 minus 80 give you a negative 60, and negative means to the left. So D is 20 to the right, E is 300 down. The last one. The net force is 30 to the right. So there is no vertical force. So F and H has to be the same, as long as they are the same. If F is 50, H has to be 50. If F is 20, H has to be 20. So if F and H has to be the same. But G, so G minus 20 give you 30. So G has to be 50 to the right. Newton's first law restated. So we said Newton's first law is an object will keep its velocity unless balanced uh, forces are balanced. So to restate it, again, you are probably more familiar with this version. Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest will stay at rest. That means its velocity doesn't change. An object in motion stays in motion. The velocity doesn't change with the same speed and the same direction when the forces cancels out. So when the forces are balanced, that's the object is doing. So to write it in the chart, when the forces are balanced, an object at rest will stay at rest. An object in motion will stay in motion with the same speed and same direction. That means when the forces are not balanced, if the forces are not balanced, then the velocity will change. So there will be acceleration. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, example. Is the force balanced? Is the force balanced? 
Up and down cancels. Left turn. No, it's not balanced. If it's not balanced, this, by the way, negative means to the left. If the force are not balanced, you will have acceleration. Yes. Are the force balanced? Yes. Up and down balanced. So there is no net force. Is there acceleration? No. When the force are balanced, acceleration is not, not uh, existing. Take a look at this. There's no horizontal force, but vertical are not balanced. You have 50 newtons going upward. So is there acceleration? Yes, whenever you have a net force, you have acceleration. So a net force causes an acceleration. If there is, is acceleration, there must be a net force. Let's take a look. These are ticker tape diagrams. Remember we learned ticker tape before? This one indicate there is acceleration. So is there a net force? Yes. This one also indicate there's the speed is changing. It's slowing down. So there is a net force. Yes. To slow it down. This one indicate the speed is constant. So because the cardinal change direction, so velocity is constant. Acceleration is zero. So there is no net force. Take a look at this graph. This is a velocity versus time graph. In this graph, it tells you velocity is constant. If a velocity is constant, acceleration is zero, so there is no net force. This one, velocity is changing, getting smaller, right? Remember, slope is acceleration. So acceleration, slope is not zero, so there is a force. Over here, again, slope is not zero, so there is a force.